Hi, in this video we demonstrate how to provision a virtual machine on Microsoft Azure. On the azure.microsoft.com page, we make sure we log into our Microsoft account and then we navigate to the Azure portal. So this is where we land on the Azure Services homepage. From here we can create a virtual machine or we can expand all services select the compute category and then from the compute category select virtual machines now from the virtual machines management dashboard we start creating a new vm by hitting the add button and then selecting virtual machine. Now the configuration options found on the basic tab um, are quite sufficient for us to be able to provision a virtual machine. However, the machine will be provisioned with default disk um, storage and the networking properties. So let's begin by providing the virtual machine name. Let's call it Azure VM. And this will also help populate other fields in on this page, such as the resource group and uh, SSH key. So from here, let's leave the subscription um, as default. We see that the resource group has been populated with a name derived from the name of the VM. Let's leave the region default US East. And then the image at uh, as Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS. Now as far as the size of the VM, let's try to choose a different size, maybe a less expensive one for the same two vCPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. So select size. And currently we have the D2S V3 selected. Let's choose B2MS instead. Again, it provides us two CPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. Select. And let's wait for the new price to load. And we see that we lowered the monthly price by $10. Again, this assumes that the virtual machine runs for an entire month, 24 hours a day. We can save on these costs by stopping the machine whenever it's not in use. Since Azure is able to generate SSH key pairs for us, then let's use the SSH public key as the authentication type. Make sure that we have a username specified. In this case, Azure user has been pre-populated for us. And then pick the generate a new key pair method. And also ensure that the key pair name is populated. And it's as you can see, it's been populated with the name derived from the name of our virtual machine. As far as firewall rules, we want to allow traffic to more ports than port 22 for SSH. So let's also select port 80 and port 443 for HTTP traffic and HTTPS traffic as well. Now at this point, we may review and create the virtual machine but it will be provisioned with the default storage and networking configuration. So let's navigate to the other tabs instead before provisioning the VM to see what properties can be managed when provisioning a virtual machine. So disk first. The disk tab allows us to manage the boot or operating system disk type and its encryption. And also here we can also add data disks to our virtual machine. On the networking tab, we can configure the virtual private network 
and also the public IP of the virtual machine. The management tab allows us to configure monitoring, shutdown behavior and backup policy. The advanced tab allows us to include a startup script, manage dedicated physical hosts and specify a region where the newly provisioned VM should be placed. And since we are not adding any tags, we can now safely review and then create the virtual machine. So first it goes through a validation phase. That is the review. And that now we can actually create the virtual machine. So first we need to download the private key. So Azure VM key, let's save it locally. And let's wait for the virtual machine to be provisioned. This typically takes a few minutes. It is still in the provisioning phase. Okay, so it seems that it has successfully been provisioned. So let's go to the resource. And this is the management dashboard of the virtual machine, where we see many properties of the VM, its status, its location, any tags, DNS, public IP address, any networking, monitoring, any capabilities, everything is listed on this dashboard. And at the top of the dashboard, we have a collection of actions to start, restart, stop, delete, refresh the virtual machine. And then we have the connect button. So let's connect to this virtual machine. Let's turn it directly through SSH. And we are provided with a few instructions on how to SSH into this virtual machine. So we need a terminal. We need to again, chmod the key to 400 to change its permissions to read only, and then run the SSH command with the dash I for Azure user at the IP address of the instance. So let's bring over a terminal and try to log in. All right, so first thing, let's try to run chmod. chmod 400 download. Azure key. And now let's run the SSH command SSH dash I download Azure, and then Azure user at the IP address 104-41.131.115. Let's make sure that is complete. Let's hit enter accept the fingerprint. And we are logged in Azure user at my Azure VM. So just said before, let's try to list the operating system cat at C OS release. And it is Ubuntu 18.04.4 LTS.
And that's exactly as we have configured this virtual machine. So it is safe to exit. Remove the terminal. And now if we needed to, we could go back to the virtual machine. And assuming that we're done with all the work with this machine, we can safely delete it. Confirm yes. And we see the message that the virtual machine is being deleted. So far, we've learned how to create a virtual machine on Azure, how to log into it, and how to delete it. But this method only allows us to create a single virtual machine instance, which may not be the most desirable for an environment where scalability and replication are key infra infrastructure requirements. So with that in mind, Azure provides another method to create VMs through virtual machine scale sets. So how do we get to virtual machine scale sets? We go back to all services, compute, and virtual machine scale sets. Now this resource type allows you for virtual machine instances to be dynamically or manually scaled as needed. So once you've familiarized yourselves with Azure VM instances, then I invite you as homework to explore Azure Virtual Machine scale sets. You will notice that the configuration and the creation methods are very, very similar to the actual virtual machine instances. So again, you have to start from the add button. And then you will be guided to a similar setup, configuration setup with the basic tab, disk networking, scaling management, and so on. And as you scroll down, you will see similar properties that you would need to configure. So give it a try. And should you need any assistance, feel free to explore the course forum for solutions or post a new discussion. So good luck with the homework. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.